What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Capes and Tights podcast over here at capesandtights.com. I'm your host, Justin Soderberg. Back for another episode of the podcast here with Jabron Graham of the Briar Patch Bookstore in downtown Bangor, Maine. Here to talk the Star Wars holiday special, the infamous Star Wars holiday special that has not seen the light of day from Disney or Lucas since 1978. So we were lucky enough to have a copy handed down, handed down, handed down of a VHS recording of the actual original special. We rewatched it. We discussed it here on the podcast for the last episode of 2022. Big things are happening in 2023. So make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as follow us on where you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple, and all your major podcasting platforms. And as always, grab all the information you can over at capesandtights.com. But let's talk the Star Wars holiday special here with Jabron Graham of the Briar Patch right here on Capes and Tights. Enjoy, everybody. I'd say happy life day, but we've already passed that. But happy life day. Let's just say it now, right? Woo! Life day. Woo! Well, that's one of the things as we start to talk about the, the Star Wars holiday special, one of those things that I liked about it is that life day is more of like a, a non-dominational, you know, they were like ahead of the curve here in 1970, the 1970s yeah. by not making it an actual Christmas special, but making it right. a holiday special uh, and, and calling it life day. Um, but yeah, it's been, uh, this, this podcast is what? Was it 1978 to now like 50, 40 years in the making, 40, 44 years in the making. Yeah. Yeah. The special is older than I am. Well, so is the original star Wars movie, but <laughs> well, not older than yeah. you are though, right? Oh yeah. I, I predated a few years, a few years, <laughs> um, but not so much that I actually saw it when it originally aired. I did. I, I don't think I did. I don't have yeah. a memory. Don't have a okay. memory of it. I would have been, I would have been five years old. I had seen, I had seen Star Wars already. Um, I had, you know, all at that point, I had, you know, stuff, you know, a few things, you know, um, but, uh, but I, I don't have any memories of watching it. But I, I do have. Um, very early on, I had a. Um, a children's storybook called the Wookiee storybook. It was mm. red. Um, I think they reprinted it later on, um, but it had all of, you know, Chewie's family in it, you know? Um, so when people talked about the Star Wars special later on, I was like, oh, wait, I know, I know who these people are. Yes. I've seen them in something before. <laughs> So, uh, but Which, it was like not, but not the holiday special. So no, I mean, it, it's funny. Cause I mean, it's hard for people to see this. So like if they're even like young star Wars fans, aren't going to be able to see this. I was lucky enough that a friend of a friend of a friend years ago had mm. got it from their parents who had VHS recorded the, the, the special on, you know, off TV. Cause it's never been right. re-aired. It's not on home video. Like you had to have, have someone, in the lineage of your lifetime to have recorded it or know someone who recorded it from the TV. Cause I mean, at the time it probably would have been worth, I would have done it if it, back in the day thinking if you were a star Wars fan, like, Oh, I've got to record this. Mm -hmm. so I can rewatch it. And then I digitized, digitalized it a couple of years ago. And it, it's still like lower than standard definition. You're talking like yeah. <laughs> VHS recording. So it hasn't been remastered or anything like that, but so it's, I don't it, know if you want to see it remastered i mean well, it's just like I just, it's difficult to watch and then you watch it in that crappy of a <laughs> resolution you're like this is even more difficult i probably should have watched it on my phone because it was literally right. shrinked over the pixels down to the point where it would have been maybe a little bit clearer to <laughs> yeah but i mean the first what 20 30 minutes is just grunting right it's just <laughs> wookie talk what well, you don't the... understand that <laughs> Well, what's funny is like I understand how like the part of the, the fun of Star Wars is having Chewbacca speak and the you know like Han Solo understand what he's saying, but we don't see it. I like that aspect of Star Wars. Like there's no subtitles, right? But when you have 20 minutes of Wookiee seven conversations, you're solely basing what they're saying off their uh, you know mannerisms and, and using their arms and in the way they're pointing at things or looking at things. It's a little yeah. much like they could have probably uh, done a little bit less than that in that hour and a half, what hour and 
38 minute special uh to right actually... like in, in the kitchen scene i'm like is is mom mad or what's yes. happening here i don't i don't understand like is she gonna beat her children like that's not okay like what i mean it, itchy itchy just leave her alone yeah. like just go sit down and play with the starfighter yes. it was just funny so i'm like watching i'm like oh and then I thought to myself, uh, we had, we didn't talk. We talked briefly uh, about the the star, the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, and it just recently came out. And you can listen to that episode with me and Paul. Uh, but it was basically the Drax and Mantis special, whereas this, as much as it was a Star Wars holiday special, was Wookie or uh, uh, Chewbacca's family holiday special. It wasn't even right. like a Chewbacca holiday special. It was Chewbacca's family that was the main characters in this thing. Which is really weird to do after the success of A New Hope to have the family of one of the main characters be the main story point. And that was the right. And obviously, it, I feel like if it was made nowadays, it would have been solely Han Solo and Chewbacca trying to get to the holiday event, not right. them at home waiting for them to get to the holiday event. Well, the interesting thing, too, is that it is, aside from like yeah. the, the, the notoriously bad stuff that's in in this program but it, it is it is very much a product of its time in the sense of it was trying to recapture those sort of like variety those television variety shows and those variety show specials that you would sometimes have with holiday yeah. shows you know um which is a very different thing than we are used to now so you know i i, I can't say it captures it perfectly obviously it doesn't capture anything perfectly um but uh you know, it, it does sort of, you know, go from not necessarily scene to scene, but like act to act, you know, yes. like you know, the B. Arthur piece and the, you know, I mean, like there's there's these different, you know, elements where it's like, OK, bring bring these performers on to do this thing kind of, you know, um, and it I, I think it really is trying to emulate those particular types of shows um, in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, it, 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 but the some of the music some of the songs i mean i'm telling you right now they got jefferson starship to play which is like i don't know if they got jefferson starship to play on this special because of the actual music or the word starship was in their band like the, <laughs> like well, this is based in space yeah. let's get jefferson <laughs> starship um but it was just like some of the stuff i'm like oh and it might have been different Jerome, thinking about it watching it live on tv with like maybe some commercials in there and and things right. that would have broken it up a little bit to make it so that it wasn't like it wasn't designed to maybe be watched in the form that I watched it straight through, you mm -hmm. know, and, and expecting it to be a Star Wars movie. I mean, also hour and a hour and 40 minutes. That's so a long. special. Jeez. Like, the, you, I mean, the nowadays specials are what, 40, 45 minutes yeah. um, max. So you have an hour and then you have the commercials in there and stuff like that. But to have that, that be that long was just like, I just didn't get it. It was basically as long as what a movie could have been, like a full-length film, feature film right. could have been an hour and 40 minutes. But, you know. I mean, I, the, ga the game I like to play is to turn this on with unsuspecting audience and see how long they will last. <laughs> um, I don't know anybody other than myself or a couple of close friends yeah. who have ever, you know, watched the entirety of it. Um, yeah. It's just, you know, it, it's so easy to bow out. Although you're also transfixed. You're like, this has got to get better, right? Like, is it going to get better? It's not I, getting better. I explained to my wife, it's like a car accident. It's like, you can't, you want to see, but you can't look away kind of thing. And, and I like it. You seeing the idea that you get to see Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and Princess Leia, and, you know, it, uh, R2-D2 was just listed as in the credits as R2-D2 as himself. <laughs> it didn't actually say it. so it was kind of funny r2d2 in that movie but uh or the show there's probably no no kenny baker actually involved in this no. film well he was probably one of the ones that was like oh i didn't do it nowadays he's probably like thank god i didn't do it <laughs> but no it, it's that seeing those massive what we see as massive actors and actresses in this really wasn't it wasn't what they are now like meaning that they only come off the, the first movie. I mean, uh, Harrison Ford was a little bit bigger, but like, you know, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, those were just not absolute mega stars as they are nowadays, or obviously some of them right. in the past. But um, yeah. to see them actually go on to a television special and actually get to think back and say that they made a feature film and that pre Disney Plus, because obviously we have this nowadays with the Marvel characters crossing over sure. to TV. See movie stars go into a TV special was a very, 
unique thing to me when I see that, thinking that it wasn't like mm-hmm. the the uh, Star Wars holiday Lego special doesn't have, you know, Harrison Ford playing Han Solo in it. Like, <laughs> there's just a British actor yeah. playing Ray. There's no there's no uh, Ray in this uh, Star Wars Lego holiday right. special. To see them actually playing the characters is pretty cool. No, it, it is. It is. I mean, there were elements of it, too, that, like, I'm sure that if I had seen it when it first aired, I would have been like, oh, my gosh, there's enough, there's more Wookiees. Like, I mean, that that's cool. You At this point, you've seen Chewbacca, and that yeah. is it. You know, you haven't had the, the prequels, you know, um, where you see the whole, you know, planet at that point, or you haven't seen, you know, you know anything else so mm-hmm. you know that that was really like that must have been really kind of really cool you know you're, you're seeing you know a family you know you know they're on this world you see like the tree hut house um which you're just like oh i want to live in that tree hut house you know that's pretty cool but also itchy stop climbing on the, you're yes. making me nervous <laughs> you know um a, a lot of these references if you if, if As... viewers listeners if you have ever actually seen it you'll know what we're talking about yes. i mean there's a scene where like itchy the 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 son is like walking on what's basically this like you know fence around mm-hmm. the house up in the air and you're just like oh my god is he gonna drop like two hundred thousand feet to yes, the bottom like, of, you know, falling off that is like imminent like, death like that is not like yes. maybe survived like that no, is the, right the splatter <laughs> yeah so um so yeah it, it, there's just you know, it's really neat to kind of see all that. And um, I mean, there's other elements to like you're saying, you know, seeing some of those actors also, you know, uh, is great. Because, again, like you said, you, you've seen one movie. That's it. You know, you've had some comics. You've had some storybooks. You know, there's, there's, some, there's some toys out by this point, um, you know. But, yeah, it's like you get to see those characters again. Now, they're not fantastic representations of those characters. You know, it's almost like the actors pretending to be yes. you know, the characters you know it's Pulling not quite it <laughs> full act yeah exactly exactly but i mean i the the coolest element of this show is the cartoon yeah by far and, and that's the only thing that's been released since so they right. took the segment of boba fett's first appearance in the, uh, the star wars universe as a animated thing which is kind of cool also to think back of anybody who talks about these like the what if in marvel being part mm-hmm. of the the lore in the actual universe and the same thing with like clone wars or like um bad batch being potentially part of the overall star wars universe is that the first yeah. ever appearance on screen for boba fett was a cartoon and it wasn't even a real person he was animated uh to see that right. too they released it last year i think it was last year 2021 uh, as called the story of the faithful Wookiee. And it's part of the Star Wars vintage series that's on Disney mm. Plus, which has the Ewoks cartoon, the droids cartoon, a caravan of courage was a, was a show or a movie back. So they released this whole like thing, but that's, they right. took the, the best part of the special and was like, let's take this out. We'll put it on there and say that was the holiday special. <laughs> right. I'll put the rest of it on there, but yes, that was, the best part, even though when you compare it to other animated things from the 70s and early 80s, it's still not the best of the animation style that you could probably get from that era either, though. It, it, it might not be. I mean, I think it was um, uh, Nelvana was the, the animation company mm-hmm. that created that. Um, and I mean, they went on to make other things that yes. we might be more familiar with as far as cartoons and stuff like that. But you know, there's a there's a piece of it where I, I watch that cartoon because I've watched that several times. Yes. Um, and uh, it it has a little bit of that sort of European, you know, animated feel to it. You know, a yeah. little bit like what you would see, like if you were watching the, the original heavy metal movie, you know, yeah, you've got a little bit of that sort of, you know, um, yeah, I guess, look to it in a mm-hmm. sense. Um, it, there's... Yeah, there's lots of like, there's parts of that cartoon where it's, there's no r- big action and there's yeah. no like, you know, huge dialogue throughout the entire thing. It's some quiet moments, you know? Um, I forgot and, about and that. That, that company, yeah. that company made uh, the, the Magic School Bus. Yeah. Nirvana, they made the Magic School Bus. They made Baron's 
Berenstain Bears, uh, Franklin the Turtle, mm-hmm. Little Bear. That's pretty cool. I didn't. I, that's a bunch of them now. Why there. hasn't Boba Fett crossed over with the Berenstain Bears? That's what that's I. What I and I'm, Beetlejuice. I'm waiting for that. There's a Beetlejuice right. one too. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. I'd love that. Um, but like I said, what is this? Uh, the the thoughts that I've talked about with other people about other programs and things that I've watched, like if you're thinking about the thing as a whole, there was a lot of bad things that added up to making it a not so great program, but there were also good things. I don't think it, there's bad movies out there that are just bad. And then there's mm-hmm. bad movies out there that had spots of shining moments, but there were so many bad things that just overshadowed those things. And I felt like that's what the Star Wars holiday special was. There were special moments throughout the entire special that made it yeah. go, okay, I understand where they were trying to do what they were trying to do, but they just didn't execute it well. And I like opening up with the idea that Han Solo and Chewie are having a struggle to get to a holiday party. It's like, we've all had that. Like, you know, this past weekend, people were going to visit for the holidays and we had no power and there was windstorms and rain and ice and all this other stuff. And it just, it's a struggle. Tie fighters. Yes. (laughs) But it's like, well, that's the thing. Imperial troops have entered the airport. Well, the best part, no, the best part is I thought to myself, like anybody who struggled to get to a holiday party or, or travel or whatever during the holidays, watch this clip of, of Han Solo and Chewie trying to get to the Life Day celebration and say, at least you didn't have people firing lasers at you. Because <laughs> look at their travels to get to the party. Uh, and and, and uh, that to me at the very beginning was like, okay, I can see the wholesomeness and I can relate to that or some of that. I've never had TIE fighters fight at, fire at me, but um that I can see where they were going with it. But again, there was just too many things not so great in the special to make it, you know, was it foreshadowing right. for the future of the star Wars universe? Like, I don't know. As I sit here with my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's interesting too, that they obviously were trying to, you know, attract um, audiences of that time to watch it as well by having, um, some well-known actors in it, um, B. Arthur, yeah. Diane Carroll. These were people who were, you know, would, were known to audiences at the time. Um, and, you know, that, that's, I, I, <laughs> guest stars are always a, a, a double-edged sword. You never know how that's going to turn yes. out, you know, but um, especially in something like this, where you've got, you know, this entire world. And obviously we haven't developed this world too much um, at this point, but, you know, um, and, uh, you know, but there were other things too that like, um, I'm trying to remember, I think both, uh, the Hulk TV show and the Wonder Woman TV show, um, were very much alive at this point. So to have like, what is essentially geek TV yep. for us now, you know, on, you know, prime time, um, is also very cool i mean i remember watching you know the wonder woman show and the incredible yeah. hulk show um because i'm that old um <laughs> but you know it's 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 it sometimes those shows had you know people who were you know guest stars and stuff like that but um this was definitely this very different thing um, also um one thing when i was reading up about some facts on this was that um uh james earl jones who was credited for for vader in this at that point had not been credited on screen um in the original star wars as doing the voice of vader i thought that was interesting i did not know that he had been uncredited as the voice of vader originally which yeah yeah which is funny because of the fact that boba fett's first appearance was in this and the first credit for for james Earl jones as as starth vader is also kind of funny to the point where like everybody that worked on this back in the day like kind of sweep this under the rug Harrison Ford for right. a while just said he never saw it he had lied he was yeah. lying he had seen it but he wanted, didn't want to admit that he had seen it and so he was just like pushing it under the rug and it's just kind of funny how there's just some like very impactful yeah. things for the future of the Star Wars universe in this one special and that it basically doesn't exist other than in lore <laughs> for people you can't just go see it and that's the question I wanted to have for a lot of people is why like I know how bad yeah. it is but like we all know like the Fantastic Four movies were horrible. Like we all know so the, the Punisher movie with Dolph Lundgren in it is bad, but they don't stop making them and they don't stop selling them. You know what I mean? Like, it's so funny to me that this 
I guarantee you if they remastered this, at least to the point where making it like 720 or 480p, like just making it so that it's on a DVD um, and put it out on the market, they would sell hundreds of thousands of copies of it just because people wanted to either haven't seen it or mm. the nostalgic part of it. And Disney and, and Lucas is just like, nope, we don't want to do that. It, it's not going to happen. It, it, it just surprises me. I just thinking in a capitalistic world we live in with companies trying to make money that this would be easy way to print money uh, is to redo this thing. And it, maybe it's rights with CBS and all that stuff too. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. No, but, um, yeah. Or, or just like partner with, obviously they own ABC, so that'd be difficult, but like partner with CBS and just have them air it again next Christmas right. <laughs> or on Life Day and just say, hey, we're going to do a one-time airing again on TV uh, or stream it on Disney Plus or something. I don't know. I just feel like it, it, it. The first five minutes of this show re-aired would be the biggest five minutes viewing on television ever, but then it will drop off. Yes, which well, I think it would, but I feel like it wouldn't be one of those ones like this is definitely not in that list of, of my wife and I watched like 85 Christmas movies this, this holiday season. And and yeah, and those also include like the 20 minute ones my son was watching while I was like doing okay. the dishes and stuff like that. But um, it's not one of those ones that's on that list. Like, hey, everybody, I, I you, all capes and tights fans. Justin has gone Hallmark. Beware. Yes. I didn't watch. I watched like one Hallmark movie. OK, or two, maybe. <laughs> I watched Violent Night, which was really good, just to let you know. But cool. the the idea that it's not like good enough for me to watch on an annual basis, like other movies are, like Elf yeah. to me, Elf is an annual movie. You have to watch it. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, those Rankin Bass um, films or TV show specials as well. This is never going to put it in that. But if you put it on Disney Plus next year in a quality that's worth watching, I probably would watch it. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, or on DVD or Blu-ray, say, you know, opening the vault, you know, like Disney does that, like opening the vault for like things and stuff, put it right. on a high, like with behind the scenes interview, like, own the fact that it wasn't great. Interview Harrison Ford, it, you know, like those people and just talk about making the actual original thing and talk about it and put that behind the scenes stuff on there or something like that. Do a special about the special. <laughs> You know, that would be really cool. I mean, there's certainly a lot of people that were involved or were in it that are still around. So, like, to have, you know, just sort of, you know, talking heads interviews about, mm -hmm. you know, what did you think of this? Did you know what you were doing? You know, <laughs> did you know what the significance of it was going to be? You know, yes. um, did you know that nobody was going to ever want to watch it again? <laughs> I mean, it's surprising it didn't ruin a bunch of people's careers, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> like, I'm surprised that, like... I mean, we still got another Star Wars movie. Let's just say, I'm wow. surprised the Star Wars... The best Star Wars movie, in my opinion, is The Empire Strikes Back, yeah. and that is the next film that's out. And that's right? basically... If that didn't work well, there wouldn't be Star Wars out right now because it would have been back-to-back -back flops. <laughs> TV is special, and then that, the Empire movie. Yeah. But no, Empire was great. Um, I was just looking up Steven Binder or Binder. Uh, he's the director of the holiday special who also okay. directed the um, 1968 Elvis's comeback special and Diana Ross <laughs> wow. live in central park. So he did those two massive successful specials on TV. And he did this one obviously after that, because 1968 was 10 years prior. Uh, he was born December 12th, 1932 and still alive. So get him on camera now wow. before he's passed. <laughs> Talk <Seriously. to> him. <laughs> Part of his Wikipedia page That's is actually one of the headers is podcast appearances. And I'm thinking, hmm, let's see if we can get yeah. on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you and then, can just record that now for next year. Yeah. I mean, you know. Well, think about this. The One of the writers, his name is uh, Pat Proft, who also wrote Police Academy. Uh, Naked Gun from the Files of the P Police Squad. Naked Gun Two and a Half. Hot Shots. And then he went on to write the scary movie three, four, and five movies. Mm -hmm. um but think about that he was the writer well first of all how much is writing and going uh, nah, 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 nah. but yeah <laughs> uh, i was trying to figure out if all these, yeah. if all these people are alive the people who wrote it 1970 or he's 74 years old oh he's dead he died this guy rod rod warren oh. that's the way but no i think it'd be kind of fun to see that like talking head behind the scenes thing uh maybe yeah. my uh um the guy who wrote the it pennywise documentary maybe we can get him on it uh and, and see if he can go and talk to lucas films and, and, and disney to get a special made about the special i take that heartbeat yeah no absolutely i you know it's it's these are this is the type of you know uh 
piece of Star Wars history that it's the behind the scenes element that is actually probably more interesting, you know, just trying to figure it out. Like, I mean, I'd love to hear more about, I'm sure there's been stuff written on this, but like the, the development of Boba Fett, you know, yeah. like I know that he was already intended at this point, they, you know, which was so early, but it seems that they had already intended him, you know, to be had character designs or whatever of the armor for empire. Um, and, uh, Sorry, his, I've got a car alarm happening outside. That's fine. But. His first actual appearance wasn't on screen. His first ever appearance was in a parade. Right. Uh, along, it was his armor what? thing. No one knew who he was. And it was yeah. Darth Vader. The two people they had on it was Darth Vader and Boba Fett in his outfit. And that's technically, if you think about anybody who was there at that parade, were the first people to ever see Boba Fett. Not the people who saw and him. They had no idea. Yeah. Right. No idea who he is. Yeah. And they swarmed, swarmed around him like, like what we would do if we saw a new character, that would actually pretty be pretty boss move for a lot of these oh. uh, yeah. multimedia companies to do is like make their first appearance of a character not on screen, but like at Comic Con or like in an interview on the Today Show or something like that. Like that would be yeah. awesome. Um, no, but yeah, seeing I mean, that, how like many that. of us, how many of us were clipping our little you know Star Wars Kenner proof of purchases on the back of our blister packs? You know, I mean, obviously not you because no. you were not even a thought yet, um, but. You know, to, to to get our you know free in the mail action figure. I mean, the development of Boba Fett, you know, from either the parade appearance or the cartoon yeah. on up, like, is just is one of the coolest things. I mean, he was introduced as like this really cool character. He's very mysterious. You had no idea, um, you know. And then his appearances in Empire were pretty great, you know. And then like Jedi just ruined him, you yeah. know, like. Oh, like, how could you do this? Um, we've tis, redeemed Boba Fett since then, but yeah, but tis, you know. tis the life of being a Star Wars fan. Oh, God. <laughs> George Lucas is like, Here you go, <laughs> right? Yeah, oh, you like this one, okay? <laughs> we take it out of it, but like, let's go back to having a guy kiss his sister, all right? Yes, exactly, right? That's a, a, all that's the focus on this whole thing, but uh, yeah, Boba Fett is funny, and it, 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 that's the thing that this special will always be known for is the introduction yeah. on screen of the first appearance of Boba Fett. And again, I think it's one of the most badass thing that he was animated. It wasn't the character like you would see him in future movies. It was an animated version of him uh, that you see. And I watched the cartoon a couple of times and it's like, I fell in love. I would have fallen in love the first time I saw it. I would have been like, this is a badass character. And to see him actually be slowly, yeah. even, even it wasn't even like he had like a, I don't know how long is this special. That's the animated thing. Twenty minutes, maybe. Probably twenty. Minutes. Yeah. But sure. um, and then he had like twenty minutes of actual screen time in the next two movies. <laughs> like he had equal amount of screen time in this animated clip yeah. as he did in the next two movies. Um, but I would have fallen in love with him too, like at, at first sight, and, and been a big fan of him. And that's why he's gone down in history as one of the most famous Star Wars characters, even though. He's really not a big part of the Star Wars characters, if you think about it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah, they build him into the whole, you know, clone yes. piece and stuff like that later on. But, you know, in the original trilogy, it's just, you know, he's he's a way of getting, you know, point A to point B, you mm -hmm. know, with, you know, Han and the Carbonite and, and all that kind of thing. Um, right. uh, you know, the other thing I thought was really interesting, and this is, you know, for the people that actually watch the entire program is is at the end there's this whole thing where like the the wookies are they're all walking into this light and then all of a sudden they're at this life celebration and like all our friends are there you know han leia i mean well, it was han was already there with chewie yeah. but like but leia and luke and uh the droids and it's just like wait what what just what just happened? Is this like is this real? Like, <laughs> is this a dream? It's the virtual ooh, reality, you're... the creepy, creepy, creepy <laughs> virtual reality thing that the Wookies are wearing. That it's like a sex machine or something like. It was really weird. I don't know what the hell they were doing with that thing, but like they were <laughs> making some noises. But no, that's what it was, right? right they were all right. wearing they were all wearing these things that they didn't know what that's going on. They just walked into this virtual reality um, life day celebration. That's what I think. <laughs> Not really, yeah. but yeah, I know what you mean though. Like, it's like, it's like they got to the point where like, we don't want to write in how everybody got to where they were. They just were there. They just happened to be there. Um, it's it's you know, special. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely special. Um, there's another element of this, uh, this program that also lived 
outside of the actual airing of the show. And that was the Jefferson Starship song um, that they do. Um, they actually included it as a bonus single on um, a greatest hits collection, oh, okay. um, which I think is pretty interesting too. Um, I mean, if you're a fan of Jefferson Starship <laughs> or you just want to relive having seen uh, the little music video that the, the guards are watching or something, yeah. you know, they, there you go. But yeah. Yeah. I, they also, I, I'm still uh, waiting for the, the, the cooking show element that happened on that. Um, I don't, I don't know why we don't have like, um, I'm looking up the, the chef's name, Gormanda, uh, the four-armed, yeah. Yes. Uh, Chef Gormanda. Yeah. Like, with where, the food where's our, yeah. Like where's our regular special? I want a cookbook or something, you know, I mean, <laughs> See, that's what they can do. They can just pull out and reboot, quote unquote, the holiday special, but with these different segments out of the original show right. and do like a parody cooking show and but the animates like do another animated one. That, you know, yeah. it's a sequel to that one. Do something. Who is it? If Ryan they, Johnson that's doing a trilogy, yeah. maybe? There you, you know? go. Okay, Ryan, do do the just, do just the, bring the some of these characters from, back. Yeah. <laughs> bring it and just bring some characters back. Like you're walking into a room and it's just that person cooking. Like, just do that. That's what we need. Um, but we, uh, I think that if they did the documentary uh, of it, it could be a way to show clips from the special, special, and only the important clips are the ones that, and then they do an hour long documentary with like twenty minutes of actual film from the actual original special. That way, people don't have to watch the original special; they get the, the you know, the whole special in this twenty minutes airing, and then the talking and interviews around it would be awesome. I think, in my opinion. Um, one thing I also wanted to, before I forget is they did use the Star Wars fanfare at the beginning, the yes. opening song. It was a Star Wars yep. song, which is something that um, they didn't do a crawl. So they did do that at the very beginning. Right. They actually didn't do a crawl like they hadn't done with the spinoffs, the one-off things like Solo and Rogue One. Uh, they don't do the crawl on it, but they did play the music, which was really cool to think of, like whether or not they actually would have. I don't remember. I watched this Legos one recently, and I don't know if that one had it in it or not. I would think they did. The Star yeah, Wars I don't remember song. either. At least the Star Wars song, not the crawl, but at least the Star Wars song. Yeah. Um, well, so there's John... also the song that, that Carrie Fisher sings. Yes. Um, to the tune of the Star Wars theme, <laughs> which must have like made John Williams just, I don't know. <laughs> you know what this reminded me of, though, when I watched it? Because I watched right after it um, for the first time in a long time with Scrooge. And all I could think of was like having it'd be live, not just, not just a holiday special, but making this thing, if it was live and you had mm -hmm. like Bill Murray as, as the executive of the, of, of the uh, network that this was being aired on. I could just picture him going right. up and talking to people. I thought it would be funny, but uh, no, I, it's, it goes down in lore as a really bad, like one of the first bad star Wars things um, we've had some, not so fun ones over the years. Yeah. Um, but if you think about it, if anybody was like, should I watch it? I, I'm going to say no, just don't, there's no, don't put yourself through it. Go on Disney plus watch the faithful Wookiee story animated show or uh, clip, watch that and be good with it. Like you don't wait for the documentary to come out on its well, 1978 says so if he did 2028 would be 50th anniversary of the special. So maybe or they're working towards that. 45th would be next oh, yeah. year. Yep. See, well, maybe they're, I said, maybe they're working on something. We don't know. I don't know anybody at Disney. Do you? Yeah. No, no didn't think so. <laughs> but speaking of uh, the fast, we finish up here and, and just did a quick one for this one, but um, was we could talk forever. That's why we, that's a good thing. We have a cutoff time um, is James Earl Jones. Did you see that news? No. What? So he uh, is retired from re doing the voice okay. of Darth Vader. He approved his voice, AI voice being used for the future of Darth Vader's voice. So he has signed a, a lifetime contract or a forever contract to allow his voice to be AI introduced to any future Darth Vader uh, things so that we're going to get the voice of James Earl Jones as Darth Vader for the rest of forever. Wow. Which is really okay. cool. I think that's that is cool. cool. I mean, yeah. being a, being a robot sounded helmet to me is okay yeah. when 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 bruce willis did it for his likeness i'm like okay we're gonna get creepy here we're gonna get some really creepy things coming out in yeah. the future of a dark diehard movie with a bruce willis in the entire movie of him not actually being in the movie but 
James Earl Jones, he says a few things. It's a digitalized voice anyway. I understand that. So I don't know if he went yeah. in the studio and recorded a bunch of like sounds or I don't know how that stuff works, but that's pretty cool. Well, I yeah. Opinion. I mean, with technology these days, I mean, he just has to say a certain probably yeah. library of words and they probably put it together at this point. So, um, yeah. Fine. Yeah, it's cool. That's really cool. I think it's awesome. I think that you it reminded me of it when you said something about him not being credited originally in A New Hope. I'm guessing nowadays, when you buy when you watch the movie, it's, he's credited in the credits now. Yeah, yeah. But I'm guessing, now, it, yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, the other cool. thing too is, I mean, I I think it's I, I guess it's it is cool to have him, but of course it won't really be him, right? I mean, yes. it's just like recordings of his voice that are digitized or stuff. But like, I. I've come across some really, really talented um, uh, voice actors that do incredible, incredible impressions of of people. Um, I'm I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. Listen mm -hmm. to a lot of Doctor Who um, audio uh, plays and adventures and stuff like that that the company Big Finish puts out. Um, and um, there's there's a couple of actors that have recreated. Um, uh, incarnations of the doctor that are no longer mm -hmm. with us or that they don't have doing, you know, acting and stuff like that. Uh, Matt Smith, for example, there's a, there's an actor named Jacob Dudman who does an amazing Matt Smith, who also does an amazing um, David Tennant as well. And it's like, you almost don't realize it's not them. Um, he's that good. Yes. Um, but I, you know, there would likely be somebody who could kind of recreate that sort of that timber and that voice that, that Jones has, you know, been able to, to do for vader um that would also just i don't know bring a, a new generation into it that you know echoing but not digitized i don't know i guess i guess i'm 50 50 because i do like i do like obviously that his legacy will live on yeah but uh, but quickly there's a little you know since i just mentioned big finish um there's a little bit of a, a big finish slash doctor who star wars crossover um element to this and that is um the writer kevin scott um, who we know has written a lot of Star yeah. Wars material recently for the High Republic and stuff, um, has also has done a lot of writing for Doctor Who audio adventures and for other stuff from Big Finish as well. So, um, and I know that um, you've got some He's coming up. connection coming up with Kevin He's coming Scott. Up. He's coming up. Here's my question. Where does he find time to do all this stuff? Like, I'm just looking at this stuff. I'm like, he must just be yeah. like, wake up in the morning, clock in, write stuff, and then go to bed at night seven days a week, every week, forever, because yeah. he's writing comic books. He's writing books. I mean, some of the stuff was probably written two or three years ago, but like, still, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah. how do you His output him? is pretty incredible. Yeah. But yeah. yes. And he took he's taking time out to talk to me, him and uh, Nick Brokenshire, uh, who wrote the book uh, Dead Seas over at IDW. We're going to talk that. Nice. I'm sure we'll touch on some Star Wars because him and... Uh, Kevin Scott and Nick Brokenshire also did a book, uh, the Rancor book together where, where yeah. Kevin did some writing and, and Nick did some uh, um, our illustrations for it. So that'd be good too. So yeah, he's coming up in 2023, which is not that far away. It's like a couple of days away from here. Well, so cool. their episode is a couple of weeks away, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, it, it's a, it's a holiday special. It's worth at one point. If you're a Star Wars fan, I feel like you have to watch it. Find someone who has a VHS tape. Maybe just wait until, I mean, that's inevitable. I think, 45th anniversary, 50th anniversary. I don't care if you edit it, cut yeah. it down, make it in an hour, do something with it. I just feel like it's some weird that there's this intellectual property out there that isn't being touched, uh, uh, that that there has to be something we don't know. Again, CBS might still own the rights to it or something, yeah. and it's a distribution thing because it can't solely be the fact that they just – Lucas uh, George Lucas didn't like it and doesn't want it out there well, because yeah, I, I, he doesn't really have much control over that anymore anyway. So maybe Kathleen Kennedy didn't want to do it. Yeah, I heard she might, I don't know. I, don't, she I might will be say a job I, soon. I'm a sadistic fan. So while you say, you know, you can pass on this, I'm just like, oh no, you got you all have to watch it. Look you at that. If you're a Star Wars fan, then watch it. Okay. But if you're not a Star Wars fan, I'll tell you what, and you haven't seen the original movies, do not watch this until you watch it. Well, maybe watch That's this true. and then watch it has the original time. movies. Yeah. Well, it's like I told someone, don't ever if someone hasn't seen Star Wars, don't show them space balls first. Because Star Wars, uh, this right. just becomes an unfunny Spaceballs. <laughs> right. So yeah. you have to watch Star Wars before you watch the special, in my opinion. At least the first three movies. Uh, well, I say the first three, the original trilogy. Uh, yeah. Because you got to see quality Star Wars before you see not great quality Star Wars. So, But <laughs> I, well, I'll tell you, you'll agree with me anyway. Everybody should watch 
the uh, Faithful Wookiee story uh, animated on yeah. um, Disney Plus because that's worth it because again you get the first appearance of Boba Fett on screen which is pretty cool uh, in that sense too but um yeah happy life day I mean that's what we gotta say right life Woo. day is and that's the other part of it they can make a non-denominational holiday special by calling it life day it, it, there's just so many perfect things get James Gunn to re- do a new one <laughs> Is he allowed to do that? Because it's not DC. Could he work for Marvel on well, the side of Star Wars? I don't. I don't. Uh, he's probably got some free agent busy. activity. You know, yeah, yeah. I busy. heard he's writing a Superman movie. Yeah. Oh, actually, did you see? Um, uh, there was a. Uh, I think it was a, maybe a Twitter post from maybe Comic Book Resources, and yeah. they were like, um, "Oh yeah, the." Um, uh, Green Lantern uh, a series for, uh, that was going to be online on HBO has been scrapped, and reportedly James Gunn is, you know, doing something with maybe including him in a movie. And like he just James Gunn comes on to these little yes. Twitter posts and has these like one word answers where he's just like fake. <laughs> it's, like, I, I love that about just, him, right? <laughs> just stomp out the rumors. Let's get moving. Right? But I, I, he did write that he's writing a Superman movie, so. Yeah, which is really right. interesting and that's a long not longer conversation for another day but like kevin feige he doesn't write these movies and so that is a similar they have similar roles now supposedly but right. the fact that he's actually going to get his hands involved in something would be interesting i think he might write some movies i don't think he's going to direct any of them i don't think he has time to do that stuff but if he's at home working yeah. and just you know writing up a, a, a basic script and someone else is going to write or a basic story and someone else is going to write the script i could see that happening too so we'll see that's a longer discussion for another day. As long as I get a peacemaker too, I don't, I don't care. That, that, that there's no way he's not making that now. Being in charge over there, I'm ready for it. So, but <laughs> happy life day, happy new year, happy life day. <laughs> I hope new. I hope people are coming and buy more. They have their Christmas money and they're buying some books over at the Briar Patch. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, absolutely. I sent so you far. a message about a couple of books and you never responded because you had some sort of plumbing issue at home. But I will um, remind you. I will get back to that. I'll, I'll look at those books to get that. It's a, All right. It's a, I need them. Or not need them, but I want them. Not for me, but for someone else. But Jabron, thanks again. Uh, happy Thank Life you. Day. May the force be with you. 